Many of you have probably heard from me in one form or another by now, reminding you that you have to jump on your discussion threads or they close within two weeks. And these are really important for A, your learning about your key theories and also for getting in assignment one. So please continue to ask if there's any questions, but there's great examples popping up already of people's main argument and critical posts and responses. Uh, I've put a response on certainly in week two myself. Um, so like I said, just keep jumping on, having a look. Um, I give a little bit of a commentary where I can. I can't unfair comment on a single post because of course this assessment will be marked uh, so that wouldn't be quite right and also I wouldn't have the scope to do that along the way for every single post that's on there so I try to keep it with broad themes and make sure where I see something not quite right like posts are coming up that aren't referenced for example um, to point that out or to point out you know how good it is to use examples so these are the different ways in which I'll comment on it now this week is neo-realism and neoliberalism, which are tricky, they're quite big. And you know, you might in your posts even focus on one of them. That's actually okay, that's certainly okay with me. But I would say the commonality that brings them together, and as you read you'll find neo-realism and neoliberalism are very, they're different theories to one another. But what makes them neo is really they go from, say, the classical realism and classical liberalism, which focuses on what are the principles and factors of human nature, like human nature's uh, tendency to move towards cooperation and progress or to be uh, defensive or for conflict to be natural. So all these sorts of ideas about human nature, how do we progress into the institutions we see today and fundamental beliefs about how we structure our world with these theories as a base. Um, so just as an example with neo-realism, there's been a lot of focus on Kenneth uh, Waltz's theories in particular, which looks at things like balance of power and the idea that there's a few main actors on the world stage. And this explained, for example, the Cold War and the arms race or the nuclear arms race between the US and Russia. This idea that uh, people bandwagon, that smaller countries get on board with larger countries in order to bolster uh, their own power. So these are all ways that countries try to deal with this uh, world where size and numbers and military prowess really dictate what kind of voice you have on the world stage. So in a way, in this world of anarchy, there is some organization that happens around this big power politics. And so that's really the type of structure neorealism is concerned with. Now the arms race itself or the idea of building up nuclear arms in itself is meant to bring about a type of stability because mutually assured destruction for example meant that people acted uh, defensively and weren't likely apparently to press the button. The closest we ever came was the Cuban Missile price, uh, Crisis because that's mutually assured destruction on both sides. Sorry, I have a better background noise with my children there. Now, neoliberalism has taken that same idea of human beings and the more optimistic view of our nature and cooperation and our tendency to head towards progress and has turned it into a theory around economics. Now, there is a range of uh, different thinkers on this, um, everything from markets should be as free as possible to we need state intervention, we need a strong protector state to ensure competition stays fair. I mean, one question that came up on the discussion board in someone's critical post last week was how do we stop monopolies from forming, you know, even with this idea of... Uh, you know, liberal internationalism. So neoliberalists would have an answer to that. They'd say, well, we stop it through organisations like the World Trade Organisation even. So that puts some structure on it. So there's actually penalties for um, being naughty in trade terms, essentially. So you can have other countries retaliate. You can have certain goods and services blocked. So, you know, this might seem to go against the liberal idea of unfettered and free cooperation and, and free flow of goods and, and intervention and let's have as little state intervention as we possibly can. That's really purest class classical realism. So it's moving to that saying, no, the state actually has a really important regulator role to make sure that that economy actually does operate in the best interests of all and keeps it a level playing field. So over to you in your readings, but in summary, neoliberalism, uh, neorealism, take it from theories about 
human nature, how and why humans are motivated to operate in certain ways, and they look at human nature in a very different way. One is quite inward-looking, the other is quite outward-looking and cooperative, the other one is quite defensive and self-interest-based, okay? But it takes that and it looks at the organisation of society, so what role do states play in that? Because the reality is we all see some structure in the world around us and in global politics, so how does that translate to structure? And anyway, I keep asking questions, like I said, uh, but your actual main critical posts and responses will be pretty instrumental. I'll keep making comments. And like I said, they close after two weeks, so just keep at it. And you can also email me if there's any queries or questions. And the collaborate sessions will continue to be once a fortnight as well. So um, make sure you're... Uh, keeping abreast of when the next one is as well. I keep uh, posting or emailing something out and there's announcements that go out from Casey, the unit coordinator. And they're a really great way to throw around ideas. And Casey's passionate as well about global politics, so he loves having a good chat about all of these ideas. Thank you, everybody. And uh, you've been great. I'm really happy seeing discussions progress as they do. Please don't mind a lot of communications about this from me. Just want to make sure there's there's not a lot of second chances in this course in a way once the discussion boards close. So I want to make sure you have every opportunity you can to contribute along the way.